So, uh, and, and I thought, well, uh, a chainsaw's a good, good weapon. It won't necessarily destroy metal, but it might cut through the plastic outer casing on some robots. It'll cut through aluminium, certainly. So that would be a good robot. And, uh, and I thought, well, it'd be nice to maybe to sort of stick that out at the bottom of some sort of robot, because it's a bit funny. It could look like, a bit like a tail. So that was the sort of like the basis of, of Matilda, really. And, and, I, and I thought, well, the other important thing is that these robots all have their own personality. They all look very individual. They don't look like metal boxes, because that's almost certain what the competitors' robots are going to look like. These all need to be have like personalities and need to sort of imagine where they could have come from. And in Matilda's case, it was some sort of wild robot sort of pig from outer space that was probably used to go around and saw up logging and something, something like that. This is no waltzing Matilda, but if Matilda dances with you, it's a dance of death. Her tusks can rip and pneumatically flip. It's a breeze for Tildy. Her spinning rear flywheel is 27 kilos in weight. The matriarch of mayhem, the mistress of mischief, Matilda. Now, let's have a look at Matilda naked, shall we? Something that you don't see very often. Here we are. This is the front off. This is the back. All made in fibreglass, as I mentioned earlier. Here is Matilda's chassis. The basic robot shape here. The, drive, the same drive chain, same type of wheels. The motors are hidden down underneath these batteries here, which I'm sure you won't be able to see. And we've got the speed controller on the top here. Same cutout, same safety cutout links. This Matilda has a lot going on in the front and a lot going on at the back, so we have to heap up all its control system on top of it. But the basic principles behind all of it are exactly the same. Matilda's weapons, flipping tusks, toss robots in the air. It's done by two rams underneath here. These are um, powered by carbon dioxide, which comes from the little bottles at the back here. It's all controlled by, the, uh, by a separate set of um, receivers. In the house robots, all the house robots, we have a separate drive box from a weapons box, so it takes two people to control each house robot. The reason for that is, if you're going into a fight, you have no time at all to actually get your weapon ready to, um, to flip somebody or get ready to put your axe in or, um, or your, your chainsaw or your flamethrower or whatever. So we have two people, one person's concentrating on the weapon, one person's concentrating on the drive. It just means you get much faster response time in terms of attack, which means you're actually more likely to do damage to the opposition. And it's devastating disc on the back here. Weighs 22 kilos and does one heck of a lot of damage. So in the Robot War Studio, we tend to have one person that looks after each robot. The advantage of that is that one person knows all of the intricate insides and workings of that robot. So if it goes wrong, if it breaks down or it gets broken in the studio, then that person is able to fix it very quickly and get it back on again and back up and running. I'd like you to meet James. James is Matilda's daddy, if you like. So uh, James, do you want to talk us through sort of uh, how Matilda's changed since the first years? Because we're now at series five. Yeah, well, it, it's amazing looking at it now, actually, because there really isn't much left of the original Matilda that I built all those years ago. Um, these tusks are completely rebuilt and have got these big sort of dump tanks which dump air into the air ram which flips the robots up. Um, that's new. I think um, it's just this strap here probably is the original bit. <laughs> I know, really no, that wasn't <laughs> even there. I, I just had it all wobbling around on the top. Yeah, that's why um, his cover fell off so many times. James was responsible for seeing Matilda naked more than once. Yeah, and on her back. Yeah, these yeah. speed controllers, they're all new. Um, the drive system's probably original. And uh, there's more batteries actually powering everything. And of course, um, I had a chainsaw in my day. Um, but apparently this is uh, it's a lot beefier. So James is most um, uh, famous, of course, for <coughs> sculpting up Matilda. And in fact, these thumbprints here and here are James's original thumbprints. Yeah. So let's uh, have a look. See, see how they fit. Well, he's put on a bit of weight <laughs> since then, I'm afraid. He's got a bit, a bit lardier. What a lot of people don't know, of course, is Matilda has soft horns. Everybody thinks they're steel, but of course they're not soft. They're soft. James, um, where do you get those from? Well, they. <laughs> They're actually from some cow costumes that I found in the stores over there. Um, we did try having steel ones once, one, one year, but they, uh, they broke off after a few fights. So, um, squashy rubber is, is 
best. Of course, we've upgraded Matilda several times over the years. Um, she's very good now, but even she falls foul to some of the competitors' robots.